friends, uh, one of the things that will happen to you when you are in a position of influence or maybe power is uh, scrutiny. Uh, you will be scrutinized very, very severely, so deeply, by the very people who are looking at you uh, in action. And, and that is what I faced through my work because what I do, uh, my ministry has thrust me before the world. And uh, you'll be scrutinized in your, in your demeanor, you'll be even scrutinized in your, in your physique, the way you dress um, and how you talk and all that. Mm -hmm. And today in my little musings, I'm going to talk about the dress code and uh, how I find myself dressing the way I do. I know it has raised some questions, especially from my haters, who claimed, you know, he dresses so flamboyantly, and he's dressing like a pimp, and, and, and all, that, all those kind of derogatory things that somebody who doesn't like you will actually say. And Africa is, is uniquely pla uh, placed by God to survive, uh, in a world that um, has more resources, you know, has more wealth. Of course, Africa has resources, but it may not have that in, you know, in, in workable terms, in seeable, measurable terms. Um, and, and so we remain the least developed um, globally. And God has helped Africa to survive even in that, in that meanness, in the meagerness, uh, in the nothingness, in the wilderness, we we survive and we are still people, and we still look good, we still smile, and we still wash our bodies and all that. Of course, with the exception of a few people who are <clears throat> not really in the normal category, and those are the people I'm called to work with. Uh, talking about apparel, uh, Africa has... Um, garments that are not very expensive and uh, it could cost a lot more money maybe five or ten times more than it costs here for example the the shirt I'm wearing is, is an African shirt it's called Akbada <clears throat> this is from West Africa you know I'm not from West Africa I am in East in Eastern Africa I'm in Kenya on the western side of Kenya so I'm in Eastern Africa and um, when Angelica was here, we, we went to Uganda, I mean Kenya, but we, we went, we crossed the border into Uganda and we did some shopping and showed the world what Uganda has to offer. And one striking thing was the pricing of things. Uh, for instance, um, in Uganda, she bought um, about 18 meters of garment um, for making uh, dresses, <coughs> 18 meters, they call them yards at only $30. And looking at the shirt I'm wearing, plus this, uh, the trousers, it's, it's an African suit, we call them African suits. And the shirt is $10, and the trousers are also 10 So the, the whole thing, <laughs> it costs um, it costs $20 to, 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 to have that. And I'm having something with, you know, the map of Africa and that thing. That's only two dollars, and then I have my watch, which is, by the way, over ten years old. A lot of um, uh, <laughs> my haters have said um, it's it's called actually it's called um, Uben, and um, no Uren, and it's not an expensive watch. I bought it, I think, in two thousand and nine. Uh, so it's almost 10 years now, and I bought it at $25. So it looks great. I think it must have been a very good watch. And and so um, it's not very expensive to dress uh, down here. And uh, some of you who are interested in getting, uh, you know, clothes out of Africa, doing some shopping, you can do that and we can help in a small way. The only challenge would be maybe shipping, but things are okay here, you can buy things. Now, 
I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. And we see Jesus Christ moving here in his earthly ministry. And we see him in Africa and then later on uh, in Africa as a refugee. And we see him at the age of 12. And then we don't hear much about him. And then we see him when he's an adult and, and, and out um, um, in, in ministry. And then we see him walk and do stuff. Uh, and then we see him uh, crucified. Uh, one of the things as a follower of Christ that uh, you should ask yourself is how did this man manage to keep these crowds together? He had 12 apostles. Those were the top-notch people that he chose to be with him, you know, continually, permanently with him forever, 24-7. And, uh, and these people left their families and they lived with, with him uh, much as Christ was God and is still God and was and he, he is still a miracle worker, he did not, um, his life was not a total miracle like, you know, you, are, you don't eat but you may be full or when you want to eat then food falls from the skies and, and then it, it comes there and when you want money and then money is just there on the table. No, he lived a mortal ministry that required money to purchase things and we see him several times you know sending out people to even buy stuff uh, which means he also needed money and through the ministry of christ um to indicate that he had money he had a treasurer and his name was judas iscariot he was the treasurer and maybe the only person with the, with the title within the ranks um, of jesus ministry and finally, then we see Jesus uh, being crucified. And when he is done and he's on the cross, these Roman soldiers um, parted his garment. They, 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 they had um, a, a cloth on him, a robe. Actually, they're called robes. And his robe was seamless. The tunic was seamless. So they, they had to cast lots. And another version said they, they, they had to tear it into four and share amongst them. You know, the question that comes is, would they have shared uh, something that wasn't good? Um, the clothes that Jesus wore must then um, have been good. They were not bad. And then I ask myself, if Jesus who walked in this world today, in Africa, for example, uh, would he, uh, what, would, what would he wear? Would he wear very expensive apparel that is really up, high up there or would he wear rags uh, we've had people say because you are helping jigger victims you are out helping people you should not wear nice things we should see you walking in just you know like rags like the jigger victims and then when you do that then we will know you are true and i, I tend to differ with that because it, it's as a, a scriptural backing that Christ was in the wearing rags. We had people who wore rags on those days, in those days. He didn't. He was not extravagantly dressed, but he was decently dressed. And that is the decency. That decency attracted the Roman soldiers to even cast lots so that um, they, they can benefit, they can go with their with his robe because it was something that was admirable. And when Jesus was here in his earthly ministry, did he really work? And the answer is no. Then how did he survive? Jesus survived through donations from his followers. Uh, Jesus had some wealthy supporters. And one of them, you know, just a few examples. One of them is, uh, is uh, um, a man called Zebedee. And Zebedee had uh, servants and, and all that and i think his wife was salome and this man had two sons and he donated he actually allowed his two sons to to join the ministry of christ james and john and um he was a wealthy man he supported christ and we have the roman centurion he was a wealthy man with servants and jesus healed his um his one of his servants 
And then we have a man called Joseph of Arimathea. He came from the little town of Arimathea. And this is the man who comes uh, when Jesus has been crucified and asks for his body. And he takes him to a sepulcher, a good sepulcher, and a decent one for a wealthy man. So he really uh, did not die um, in, in poverty. He was not surrounded by poverty uh, as he went with the rags. And I don't think Jesus would have been bitten by jiggers while he was here. Of course, a jigger would have bit him maybe, but he would have removed it if it ever made that mistake. So um, he lived an earthly ministry, an ordinary ministry where he spent money, where he got donations and he had a treasurer and all that. So, I, I, as a follower of Christ, I live with that in my mind daily. Would Christ do this? Indeed, we have prosperity uh, preachers and, and people who are so extravagant, you know, doing things that are not even necessary, going to levels that are not sensible at all. And, and the reason why these people will have jets and will wear a suit that is costing a thousand dollars, that's crazy, <laughs> you know, is because these people have a lot of money and, and they, don't, um, they don't help anybody. This money goes to them while they tell people the donations will go to the Lord which is really the beloved of the Lord, serving the poor. This money doesn't do that. And then they, they, they subvert that into ministry, which is actually them because they are the ministry. They say, they call them, you know, Benny Hinn ministries or blah, blah, ministries or blah, blah, ministries. And they are the ministries themselves. So when you give a donation to them, you are actually giving them. So, and it, when it's too much, then they, you know, people do funny things with money. So then they will take that money and, and use it to buy um, very ex unnecessarily expensive watches and all that. <laughs> and, uh, and, and really, that is the folly of money, the folly of money and ultimate power and, and all that. It, it causes people to really get into error. And, and so I, I don't support that. I don't support that um, a minister, somebody who is serving Christ, should really go overboard with, with, with expenditure and live in extraordinarily expensive homes above all everybody else so that they are living a celebrity life. Um, the blessing of God, of course, comes up upon us and the Lord will bless the work of our hands and the fruit of our, our womb. That's what the Bible says. But when we go overboard and engage into extravagances at the expense of the, the ministry, which are not us, the ministry are the people we are called to serve, then we are absolutely, we are very wrong. Um, we have to live frugally. We have to live as good stewards to the seed that God puts in our hands. And, and our works should testify to the seed of Christ in our hands. I call, it the, I call it the seed of significance. It is the seed of importance. It is the stewardship seed that God puts in our hands. And so I just wanted to muse a little bit about about dress code and all that. By the way, I have expensive glasses. And this one uh, was um, bought for me. You know, he sent it money and I went to do that. It cost $200. And my friend Riz Goulet did that. He's my supporter from the U.S. One of the things that I've really bred a lot of jealousy around me is that I am, you know, supported by Americans and people from the first world whom a lot of people here assume they are so wealthy. <laughs> and looking at it, really, you are wealthy if you are in America by our standards. You who call yourself poor in the African standards, if, an Africa, if your house was brought here, then uh, it has no comparison. Absolutely. 
it has no comparison and so you will be the wealthiest man or the wealthiest woman in africa and and so these people who are not wealthy from the western society from the first world countries support rise up society and when africans look at that they feel wow he's being supported by these wealthy white people and so he has a lot of money which as we know is not true i thank god for the supporters that god has put in my life and i have promised them again and again that i will always endeavor to do the right thing as a human being of course i'll always be tempted and when people are given money they do stupid things i know that and i've told my supporters to just keep on praying for me that i will remain faithful and true that i will not deviate that these material things will not suck me away from my calling that every day i will wake up and live with the eternity in view and understand that this body is only fleeting away this tabernacle of flesh is going away and any time i live and sleep through into eternity and so keep those prayers going and keep supporting us and i have as i've always said we will always be out we'll try to be true and strive to do something for somebody with an understanding that we don't earn heaven through works no we don't earn our salvation through works and we don't impress the lord by doing what we do first things first it's about the lord then everything else comes secondary so thank you my dear friends and supporters for standing with me and allowing me to live and to smile and to get out and pour into others you are a blessing and god in heaven knows it and it is <laughs>